Okay, so this is the second half of the Zoom meeting for December 2nd. Um, this is a discussion about the p-value. So uh, this refers to one of the homework items uh, from module 15, topic three, homework one, on the p-value of a sample mean. And so that's an item that's due on December 7th. So that's the end of this week. There is a lecture on this topic that you'll find over here in the module 15 topics three and four, media lecture and reading section. So there's a, there's a couple of, uh, there's a PowerPoint, a couple of PowerPoints in there um, that I've made and then uh, there's some public domain videos. But uh, what I want to do is uh, just to make up a different example uh, to kind of supplement the examples uh, in those PowerPoints. Okay. So, I'm just going to kind of make up a problem here. And um, so I have this hypothesis that the population mean weight of the stones in my garden is two ounces. Okay. And just to make things easy, I'm going to, part of my hypothesis or my educated guess about that big population of a few thousand stones, I have a hypothesis about the standard deviation also. So when I say known standard deviation, it's, it's either known as a fact or it's part of your, your hypothesis, part of your assumption going in. So I'm going to, uh, my hypothesis includes that the Standard deviation is half an ounce, 0 0.5 ounces. Now, I'm going to assume that the weights are normally distributed. So you can't use these methods unless either the variable, the weight here, has a normal distribution or your sample size is large. And so in setting up the problem, I'm going to assume a normal distribution and then we don't need a big sample. Now, so here's my hypothesis. Okay. So the mean's two ounces, standard deviation's half an ounce, the variable's normal. Okay. But then you are thinking, no, you don't believe that. I mean, you, you figure I probably just made it up. I guess I did. Okay. So you think it's probably wrong. So you have this idea that the population mean is less than two ounces. So this is a left-sided alternative. Okay. You go out and you collect some data to try to challenge my hypothesis because you think I'm wrong. You collect data. You weigh 16 randomly selected stones. You look at them. You see there's no big outliers. Okay, that big boulder in the corner of my garden didn't happen to get in there. So it was a simple random sample. So you think it's probably representative of the population. You get the sample mean, the average weight of your 16 stones, and you get 0 0.31 ounces. And you say, well, look, that's a lot small. You say the mean's two ounces. I get a sample mean that's much smaller than that. So that's evidence that I might be wrong about my null hypothesis. 
but the burden of proof is upon you because I'm going to go on believing my null hypothesis unless you can convince me that it's not likely to be true. So what happens is Sorry about the phone there. Okay. So what happens is you say you've got evidence against my hypothesis and I say maybe you just got lucky you only picked up 16 stones there's thousands of stones out there maybe if you went out tomorrow and you got a different sample maybe you'd see my two ounces is about right and so your argument has to be well wait you know that's not likely okay you have to convince me it's not likely you'd get such a small sample mean if the population mean was really two ounces. Such a small population sample mean. Small because of the less than here. Okay. So your job is to find the p-value to find out if my null hypothesis was true then what would be the probability of getting such a small sample mean? If the answer is it's not bloody likely, then you will convince me, well, I guess my null hypothesis must be wrong. So the p-value, it's the probability that you'd get a sample mean this small or smaller just by chance if the null hypothesis was true. You're hoping to see a real small number so you can convince me it didn't happen just by chance. Now how's this X bar distributed? See? It's normally distributed. because of the central limit theorem. If you have a simple random sample representative of the population and either X is normal or the sample's big, then the sample mean has a normal distribution. So if our hypothesis, we don't know, we don't know if the mean distribution is normal or not, but that's the hypothesis we're testing. So if this hypothesis was true, then this would be the shape of the curve. And so the p-value is this orange area here to the left of 0.31. And I'm looking to the left because it was a left-sided alternative. It's got nothing to do with what the number is here. I could have gotten anything for this and you'd still go to the left. You're going to the left because you want you want the probability of getting such a small sample mean because it's a left-sided alternative hypothesis. So we know this is normal by the CLT, and that tells us we can find the areas. That orange area we can get from Excel using the norm dist function. So what's the area to the left of? 0.31, if the mean is two and the standard deviation is 0.5 ounces for X, but you divide by the square root of N to get the, the standard deviation of this curve, the distribution of X bar. So this distance out to the inflection point in the curve is sigma over root N. So you type this into Excel and we'll get, we'll see what we get. And if it's real small, I might be convinced that my hypothesis is wrong. Now, ideally, 
before you even collect any data, you might you might get me to agree, make a make a contract ahead of time, you know, okay, I will be convinced if the sample mean, you know, if the p-value is below 0 0.05 or something like this. So you kind of you, you ought to know up front what it's gonna take to convince me. That could help you to decide how big does your sample really need to be, but we'll do sample size calculations later, but this one was a sample of size 16. Okay, so I just need to type in my, my formula here. was 0.31 ounces, and if that's going to be ounces, then the population mean from my hypothesis needs to be ounces, and the standard deviation needs to be ounces. It's, use any units you want. The SDDs would work okay too, but it's just it's got to be the same units all the way across. Well, you notice that E right there? This is, this is scientific notation here. So that's a really small number. See, my p-value is 5.96 times 10 to the negative 42nd power. That's 0 0.000. Okay. You've got 42 zeros, okay? That 5 is in the 42nd decimal place. So what you figured out here is that if I was right about this distribution, and you did got one of these samples every few seconds for the next few billion years for the rest of the life of the universe, you might get so lucky again once. So it really probably did not happen just by chance. My hypothesis was wrong. So, I'm, I'm gonna reject this null hypothesis because the p-val is so small. Typically, your rejection criterion might be either if you got like less than 1% or less than 5%, okay? Maybe in a sociology journal they might think it's interesting if you got less than 10%, but anyway, this is, this is just inconceivable that this was just luck. So, all right. So that's all for, for this topic.